Hello, this is Jeremy Fox. This is Dork to Afternoon Scuttlebutt, and we're here today with Adam Driver. Hi. Wait, that's not Adam Driver. Did did you did you call us publicist? No, no, did I did. I did you? I tried tried to, but um, they 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 said he was unavailable today. Uh, he's currently filming uh, on location at an undisclosed location, and um. Okay, so so we're here today with Adam Fox. Hey. The wrong Adam. Yeah, the wrong Adam. Definitely so the wrong Adam. We're, we're here today with the wrong Adam to uh, talk about Dork Day Afternoon. So uh, what would you like to talk about? Um, Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of figured, Jeremy, since... Speaking of which, I don't know if anybody else knows this, and this isn't going to seem like much to anybody else in the audience, because to you guys, there's only been two episodes recorded. That's all you've heard so far. But in actuality, we've recorded a few episodes, and this is the first time we've done recording with two people in the same room. Yeah. Yeah. We Normally, we are thousands of miles apart. Thousands? Uh, the th- thousand. <laughs> Just say multiple at, thousands? At least, at least <laughs> one thousand. Yeah, but at least one. And, and some, change. some change. I mean, I think probably in total... If you totaled up everybody's, I mean, if you drew a pentagram on a map, right, but it, right. Well, I'd, it would be a we would call I guess Cthulhu. it would be a pentagram. Um, it would be. <laughs> we need to all reconsider where we live so that we can like. I do. I'm working draw on it. I'm working on it on the map. All right, new goals. New goals. Re- relocate to places where we can draw Eldridge signs across the United States. Uh, unfortunately, that just means someone's going to be in Fort Lauderdale. Fort Lauderdale. Good I'm luck, sorry. Brian. <laughs> <laughs> right, we voted you to Fort Lauderdale. You're going to be our Florida band. <laughs> that tracks. I'm sure he would agree. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Oh, he's going to end up using a 22 for a fuse and getting shot in the nuts. <laughs> Wait, has someone actually done that? That's somebody used a, a 22 shell in their truck mm-hmm. to to function as a fuse, and then it ended up going off and shooting them in the nuts. Holy shit, that is amazing! Florida, <laughs> listen for all anyone out there that's listening to this from Florida, get your shit together. <laughs> <laughs> that is not what I expected. I expected a uh, like. I don't know what the issue is, and I don't have a lot of room to talk because. The state I live in has some issues too, but Florida, come on. Like a lot of states say to themselves, at least we're not Florida. <laughs> there, are, there are a lot of states that do. Like it's become a meme. Like the guy from Florida. But, Florida ma'am. Yeah. Flor- Did I say ma'am? Man. I I believe Florida me. man. <laughs> Pause for edit. Florida man. <laughs> 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 oh shit oh man no so jeremy so yeah i mean like the whole idea behind this uh was i figured we could like discuss uh, uh gming styles how to prep for campaigns since now we have like the two episodes up of um the one well two quote unquote a session zero episode and a session one episode of uh two past midnight the twilight 2000 campaign and then one uh episode of encore the lost which is pathfinder uh second edition extinction curse and uh who's running that one i i think it was jeremiah johnson oh. jeremiah johnson if i remember correctly also you prep prep <laughs> <laughs> barely <laughs> <laughs> barely a little bit, a little bit. I prep a little bit. For me, like I, I'm very new to the GMing thing. Um, that was part of the reason why I thought it'd be an interesting question because this is your first time prepping for a long term oh, campaign. For and sure. I was curious, like, what's that like? I, I mean, like I started out doing for the listeners. I started out doing some of the society scenarios and running you guys through it, really just because we were playing a first edition game. And second edition came out and I really wanted to try out the rule system. And well, honestly, I just wanted to play more, you know, <laughs> I, I was, like, I was uh, fiending, you know, so I figured the only way I could do that was actually start my own game and start GMing and bringing other people into it. And holy crap, that was freaking terrifying, <laughs> honestly, <laughs> like it, GMing, like picking up the GM hat is 
absolutely nerve wracking because of all of the pressure involved in that. And if, if you're not necessarily prepared for that, you know, there it's, it's intense. It's, it's pretty intense, but it's also incredibly rewarding. Um, as far as the, uh, the pressure, <laughs> but keep talking, this is going for Facebook. Yeah. You're going for Facebook. Um, but no, GMing is probably one of the greatest things I, I've started doing. Um, running through the society scenarios, it was kind of like one off. So prep was a lot, it's a lot easier, you know, because it's all just like one bite sized module, four hours, you know, you just read through the scenario and then go with it. Um, it's a, it's a good way to kind of get your feet wet as a GM. But then once we had a, a group fairly well stabilized for, for second edition, it, it was, it was ultimately my idea to run an adventure path. And uh, as far as prep, I used to prep a lot more, but it's, I've gotten a little lazy about it, <laughs> if I'm being honest. And and with the way we've been recording, I haven't really, we've been focusing on Twilight 2000 pretty heavy for like the last month. So I've kind of like set it to the side. And then once we start getting back into the routine of, of doing second edition again, we'll, yeah, I'm probably going to prep better yeah. but i would say at least have an idea of where the story is going you know and in the immediate future for your players is probably the biggest thing outside of that just wing it or don't or <laughs> you know <laughs> I, the best advice i ever heard um was prep to the level of your comfort if if you're comfortable prepping, like over analyzing everything and having backstories for NPCs the characters will never meet, do that. If you don't want to do that, don't. You know, if it's too much pressure, don't do it. You know, just make it up on the fly if that's your style. It's it's. I think it's dependent on the GM themselves. What about you? No, I was uh, I was thinking about that same thing. It's like the that advice that, that I've heard and seen in some places where they talk about like don't over prep. It's like well, it's like. I feel like you have to over prep first to know what over prepping is. Right. You know what I mean? Like you go, wow, I prepared way too much for yeah. this. No one's ever going to go there. Like I remember when we were running that Starfinder game and I prepped an entire world, right? That was going to be like the final location of this one middle part of the arc of this giant campaign. And the party completely skipped it with one wish, <laughs> literally one wish skipped an entire story arc. And I was like, well, okay, I, I guess, guess I won't do that. I guess we're not doing that anymore. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Why did I give them that ring? That was dumb. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. It was the ring of three wishes. Yeah, it was a ring of three wishes. Yeah. From Santa Claus. From Santa Claus. From Santa Literally Claus. from Santa Claus. So that's what happens <laughs> when you over prep and then improvise and go, well, this is cool. <laughs> I'm going to have Santa Claus. And it wasn't even my fault. Somebody else asked Santa for wishes and i was like that doesn't seem like a santa thing but okay we'll i mean that that'll be interesting he's a magical elf right i mean yeah but does he normally grant wishes he brings presents here's the like, question that's different. Would, would santa claus be a sorcerer a druid or a wizard i'm gonna say only based upon his animal companions i already have an answer druid and, and you're wrong okay he's an artificer is it an artificer? Yeah, he builds shit. So are those robotic reindeer? All of them. Yep. Every single one of them. Interesting. Have you not seen Futurama? Come on. Well, that's the Futurama interpretation <laughs> of it. I mean, <laughs> it's also quite possible he's just a druid. Oh, yeah. And they're all like animal companions. Rogue. You know, Rogue's not a bad one. Rogue is, actually does make sense. He's probably something stupid like a fighter. He's just like, yeah, see, that's one of those moths I was talking about. Yeah. Like, I don't know. They decided to join us in here. But yeah, no, yeah, it's probably like a fighter or a barbarian. That's probably what it is. He's probably a barbarian, a barbarian. And we just don't, we haven't seen that side of Santa Claus yet. Terrible. And if you have, then, you know, you don't. <gasps> <laughs> you should be careful talking in that direction because i do have stuff on the guitar so that it doesn't make extra noise but it might still make extra noise you got stuff on the guitar <laughs> but yeah no the back to the original topic about uh preparation yeah i mean i H? know yeah like um huh 
you said preparation. I said age. Age, yeah, preparation age. Gotcha. Yeah. No, I was thinking about the um, the the. So like when I was running the um, the Pathfinder game that we were doing prior to this too, like it was the same thing. I mean, like running an AP, like there's just this inordinate, just yeah, ridiculous yeah. amount of information that like is there and and available for the GM, and it's it's amazing and all its backstory and stuff. And then it's like a lot of times it doesn't doesn't show up in the campaign. It yeah, doesn't. I think it informs the GM as to I think it informs the GM as to how to play those NPCs or, you know, just the enemies and things like that. But it's ultimately up to the GM how much they want to use that. Right, right. Well, that's what I'm saying. There's just this, this like, a, a lot of information that's just, and I'm not saying it's not, po- that's pointless because it's useful. You know, in GMing it, it's it's very useful to have all of that, that backstory and information about the, you know, the 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 world and the, the characters and the main players of the campaign, the NPCs. It's just, it's like, it can be overwhelming and daunting. And I think that might be one of the holes that um, a lot of GMs probably fall into is they're trying to like run it strictly by by the, the numbers. A- yeah, by the numbers. And here's yeah. what the characters do. Here's what this, how this character acts. Here's what they do. And how would they do? And it's like, well, let me look this up. It's like, just, you know, sometimes you just have to like make it up. Mm-hmm. And if you have to like retcon someone's backstory for that reason, then like, I think there was a character in the Iron Gods when I was running that like in the book was a was a halfling and like and, and for some reason in our original playthrough like no one it, realized it, it 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 and like we all assumed she was human and then like it changed the way like some of the dynamics happened and then like later on I was like oh shoot she was a halfling yeah and I just kind of had to be like oh well that doesn't matter <laughs> move on too late <laughs> uh, yeah I'll be honest I've already removed some NPCs from uh, the extinction curse one. Oh, that's fine. I mean, it's, yeah. They just kind of disappeared. I, and I, I, I kind of like stole their information and gave it to another character more or less. Yeah. I, yeah, I get that. Yeah. That makes sense. But like, and that's the, the advantage of like with, with two past midnight, the way we're running it is, um, so like totally different game shift gears, you oh, know, totally like, so yeah, with pathfinder and running adventure paths, it's like, you know, and, and that's one of the, um, I guess critiques that are sometimes about, you know, Pathfinder or Adventure Paths in general is that it's like too much on the rails and like you're you're pushed in a very specific direction and there's not that freedom of like an open world. Like that that is complaints I've seen before. I like it at GMing it because it's 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 a lot less prep. It is a lot less prep. <laughs> Especially if you can go online and be like, let me just buy this whole book for the <laughs> yeah. roll twenty. Yeah, It'll I don't have be to done. plan an entire point A to point B yeah. campaign. But I mean, like, yeah, no, but the but then running Twilight Two Thousand um, is a totally different kind of. Um, I mean, I could plan an entire campaign that way, but why would I? Why would I want to do that when it's like you're here? What direction do you go? You know what I mean? Like, there's just so many things. Like, I'm better off just planning a couple minutes in the future. <laughs> sometimes, no. Well, I mean, okay. So for those that are unfamiliar with the system. The um the the game comes with and in the referees manual and also like if you buy like the box set it comes with a like deck an encounter deck that you just kind of like every shift flip over a card and it's like this is what they might encounter you know and you just kind of and it'll have like two or three sentences maybe like quick little blurb and you just make it up as you go you know by the see the pants yeah yeah. Now, admittedly, I've been drawing the cards ahead of time prior to the sessions so that I don't have to completely make it up on the spot. Right. And that works out for like streamlining the process. Right. Yeah. It just makes it easier to to improv it because then I'm not improving and I'm like, OK, this is kind of what's coming up, you know, and I can like think ahead a little bit about what that means and try to fit it into like the characters. But it's still it's it's not like. Opening scene of campaign, you know. How does that lead from point A, where we start, you know, to, you know, in the Shire? We start in the Shire, <laughs> right? <laughs> All of a sudden, there's a knock at the door. And then, and and then, then you and turn around and you're shows mortar, up. And right? next thing you know, you're, you know, like, how did I get to this fucking volcano? <laughs> <laughs> right. That's what I'm saying. Well, I was actually thinking about the Hobbit. I was thinking oh, about the first same. one. And so, but still, you know, next thing you know, there's Smaug and it's just the whole the whole thing. But. But yeah, I mean, and it's it's so it's different. It's it's not as quite as linear. Um, and I think you can still have an idea for 
um, for a campaign and have an idea for like what's going on within it. And, but it's, it, it's, and I think it's partly because of the setting, even it doesn't have that, um, the big bad evil guy type feel to it right. because it's just kind of like the world is the big bad evil guy. Right. You know, there isn't one person, an evil sorcerer somewhere who's doing all this shit. It's like, no, it was like, these two countries blew the crap out of the world, you know, and like, and then they just kind of and went backwards. And yeah, like, no, and everybody kind of has to luck. deal with it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, it's like, so how do you, you know, and then it's just survival against that world. But um, yeah, and I think that's just it's an interesting part about the setting is that it it allows for a lot more um, like player contribution to what's going on in the world, you know. Right, but I think that also goes back to the the way free league games are designed specifically they're like from what i've been reading about their multiple game systems is that their games are about the players it, they're the players are the core of the story and it's is really the story that like the ref or the gm and, and the players want to tell there's no real i mean they have adventure paths and things like that but they're m- way more open it, it it's very much like writing prompts mm-hmm. you know you have like a two or three sentence writing prompt and you're like here you go this is the thing mm-hmm. what do you do with it you yeah. know and then it's it is how those characters deal with those situations right yeah and, and that's the great thing and that's actually the great thing about this hobby in general yeah <laughs> is that like there are so many different ways to play rpgs you know what i mean like yep. that you could you could you know sit down and be like here's a book blah blah, blah. i don't have to prep anything you know, and yeah. like do the whole campaign and you could you could like pick a path, flip through from chapter to chapter and GM your friends through it. That would be a really, really uh, terrible way to do it, by the way. I don't recommend doing it that way. <laughs> what, like, what do you mean? Well, no, no. I mean, like not having read ahead like you're oh, like you as a yeah. gm are just kind of like flipping through Winging it and yeah. you're like oh you, that's what that was about oh, no yeah and you don't even know while you're doing it it's a good idea to read ahead a little bit you know a little bit as a gm but like you know, you could do it that way, or you could run a whole campaign where you just actually wing it the whole time. Yeah. You know, and like well, I mean that yeah. yeah, and different systems lend themselves to the different styles of play. I mean, even then, like with the Starfinder one that I ran for years, like I was for the most part, like I we started with a point A, right? Like here's where the campaign starts, bam, you know, and I had like the end. And even then, that was kind of fuzzy. Like, I didn't exactly <laughs> have it, like, 100% planned that, that out. That did develop it, over time. Yeah, it yeah. was like, here's the big bad. This is what the big bad is, you know? And then, like, everything else in between kind of, like, was improvised in between sessions. I would, like, oh, this is the next thing. Oh, this is the next right, thing. Right, because that, that was one of the GMing things that you were doing, is you were taking what the players were giving you yeah. and developing the next session based off of that. Right, right, right. right. Yeah. Yeah, and so that was another way. To, but yeah, I mean, and I think it's interesting that there's. But that's yeah. also that's ultimately the difference between running a homebrew right. and running an adventure path. The adventure paths are, by their nature, much more rigid. I mean, you can go off the rails. Oh, all, yeah, you, all you totally. want is GM. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> you could you could start an adventure path and then totally end up completely different from see, where the writers met, intended. See, now I have an idea where you start one adventure path. Stop it and then start. No, another. no, you don't stop it. You just like shift into a different adventure path. So you could run essentially. So you like run like book one, three adventures at the same time. Of this one, and then you run like book. Oh, that would be amazing. Two of this one, and then you get book three of this one. That is one of the most convoluted ass ways of running a game. And then you bring them all together in the end. That sounds like a nightmare. <laughs> How would you tie them all together? I don't know. I haven't even picked. I, I literally just thought of this in the moment. Yeah. What? If, what if it was multiple game systems? Oh, so that's a whole other problem. Yeah. That would be. Yeah, that sounds horrible. And I'm going to make a mental note to try that later. You do it. All you, Bubba. On. I've already got an idea. I think I know, I think I know how to do it. So now that we've talked about GMing, let's talk about characters. Oh, characters. Okay. Mm-hmm. So uh, what was your inspiration for uh, Jacob? Jeremy. Oh, my inspiration for Jacob. I see. If you listen to the session zero, where the character creation is actually going through, there, my inspiration was solely the dice. Mm-hmm. I I've gotten to the point 
in my character creation that I don't, I don't try to make specific characters anymore. Mm -hmm. I, I really enjoy the challenge of rolling dice to see what chance gives me. And then I fill in the blanks from that point forward. Like I started out making like fighter characters and rangers and like much more straightforward combat characters. But I mean, that's, I feel like that's pretty normal for noobs, you know, like you start out with something easy and then go from there. But at, once I got to the point where I like, I built a wizard and multiple other like <laughs> high level casters and stuff like that. I kind of, I kind of gave up on it and I, and I decided to just let the dice decide for me, especially with a game system like Twilight 2000, because it, it lends itself with the life path system. Oh, it's phenomenal. And I just, I wanted to really stretch the legs on it and just see what random chance would give me. And I've just fill in the gaps from there. Right. Yeah. No, I, I, that, that, that totally felt like the way it was made. Like it was like based off of, yeah, like you were randomly rolling, like, what was this? You know, like, I think most people will decide, like, if their character is going to go to college or join the military or yeah. be a police officer. Like, those are the, the parts that you get to make the decision. And Jeremy just kind of decided to roll for all of them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I rolled for as much as I could could roll for. Where, where to put stats, where to put skills. I just wing it and then i'll i'll play with it from there and, mm -hmm. and see how it turns out mm -hmm. because that i feel like from a, a role-playing standpoint which I've, I've gotten to the point with role-playing that I'm, I'm i'm more interested in testing my abilities as a role player and actually stepping into the shoes of, of this person and, mm -hmm. and seeing how they see the world mm -hmm. and like stretching you know those empathy muscles as it were right instead of trying to force some some concept in mm -hmm. into the world. Like I'd rather test it out and see, you know, try it out. Cause that's the, that's the fun of it. Yeah. It's yeah. like trying out this new person's clothes. Mm -hmm. well, what the hell? Why not? Yeah. Cause I know that like, and I'm going to think about like Pathfinder or, you know, like um, when I would make characters before it was very much like, I want to make a fighter. Yeah. You know, or I want to make a gunslinger. Right. Like, and then the character builds would build from that. Right. You know what I mean? Or, the, you know, like a lot of times that was um, kind of how I, I went about it. And uh, yeah, this time for uh, Ash, uh, Ashley, that actually still was how I did it. I was like, I want to make a witch. <laughs> I want to make a witch. I want to make a witch. <laughs> and so I I've like, never played this class. I've never played a witch before. And then I was like, I want to make a changeling. And then it kind of went from there. And then like, and then a lot of the other stuff about that character kind of developed from that initial witch changeling idea. Like once I started reading up about changelings, I was like, oh, this is interesting. I think I can come up with an interesting backstory for the character which we haven't even gotten into yet in the show so i'm not gonna go Especially into any of that. not yet no. no but um but yeah and i mean from that point i it was kind of like the the personality of the character developed out of out of those lines out of yeah. those things i was like well what makes this interesting and, and and it wasn't like i completely built the character it was just it was which changeling yeah and that was it and then i was like okay witch and changeling i was like so what would be an interesting way of doing this and it, for a circus theme and it kind of snowballed De from, from those two yeah. things you know, like, like, oh that's what this character is and then i built the character based off the concept so it was like a little bit of like this just to, as a starting point and then came back around to like oh okay that's how i can build it and then i put stats and you know skill points yeah. and well, not skill points anymore the whatever attributes yeah. well no i was thinking oh like, like trained the yeah the proficiency the, yeah proficiencies yeah. like i i chose those based off of who the character was and what they were doing you know because yeah. i like i before i would you know when i was experimenting with different character builds i would pick one skill and it could be a random <laughs> arbitrary skill and i would min max the shit out of it yep to make that character the best Whatever that one skill is, like yeah. I, I, with it's okay, I made the best engineer I possibly could make. It's okay was a Yosoki, uh, in Starfinder. Yeah, that he was a, he was a Yosoki mechanic for Starfinder, and he was the best damn ship engineer that you could possibly that the build. rules allowed for. that the rules would allow for <laughs> at that <Yeah>. level. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, 
And, and that was much to the detriment of, of of a lot of other things because like he didn't have weapons when he started. No, no, he, didn't have <laughs> what, he had a flare gun. He did have a flare he gun. He had a flare gun. It. He didn't even have a space suit. He, no. Like he no didn't armor. have armor. Nothing. No. Nothing. <laughs> but it was fine. Like he survived. Because he spent all the money on an upgrade for like the, <laughs> the cybernetic upgrade. Yeah. I mean, because because that was at the time, that was much more interesting to me to like start out almost at a negative with just a normal civilian human person. Mm -hmm. Well, not necessarily human because you so cute. You so cute, yeah. But um, just start out with a civilian that's not an adventurer. They're not. They're just a regular Joe and mm -hmm. then they get thrown into this thing and, and and going from there and see how they develop. You know, it was, I, I even took negatives when it came to attributes when during character creation. Yeah, I think you did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, but that, but that's also because the, there's a difference, I think, between min-maxing and, and, that because I mean it is like totally just maxing up the thing, but you're not minimizing your weaknesses at that. Point. Oh, that's fair. I, you know did, I, I mean? didn't like minimize you, the weaknesses. Yeah, no, you I just, just you 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 leaned into them. Oh, like yeah. it was like he doesn't have armor. He, he doesn't even have a gun. Or he doesn't it's, even have a weapon. A flare. He's gun. a flare gun. <laughs> it is basically useless. And then, and then it was like, I'm sure we'll find guns in the beginning of the adventure. And I was like, ah, but it was fine. I don't think you did. I, I mean, honestly, it was fine because that's the. But that's the thing about you know, like RPGs and playing in a party and collaborative storytelling, mm -hmm. you don't have to be the, like, if you have an entire party of fighters, that is some boring ass storytelling. I mean, it could be really interesting, but, but if everybody in the party does the same thing, it's, eh. For those audio listeners, I make a game looking off thinking about a party full of fighters. Oh, we should face. totally we should totally do a one off <laughs> where everyone's like one class. It's going to be a fighters. TPK. Oh, totally, because it, they they won't have healing. Yeah. They'll have they'll go up against one spellcaster who will just, just mop the floor. If with he them. gets initiative, we'll fuck them up. Yeah. There's a fireball, you're all dead. <laughs> you're all dead. Good job. That's it. Uh fear. <laughs> yeah, fear. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, but that's interesting, too, is, like, having characters that are specialized, like, hyper-specialized. I mean, and it does. It creates a detriment to, like, being able to do other things. Right. And, uh, but, yeah, but I mean, but Pathfinder is a system, definitely, if you're playing with enough people, you know, like, four, I think, is, like, the, if you're playing with three and you build that, you're probably going to, like, screw over the party, you know? Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you have four, then you have enough that someone's probably filling one of the other roles. Right. And, and even know? at the time when we we started that the that first party had like five or six player mm. players in it. It it was it was one, not nothing. Two, and then we ended up we went all the way up three, to eight at four, certain five. points. Yeah. 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 No, that was terrible. Terrible. That eight eight players is a lot of players. That combat, those combats got real slow real yeah, quick. Yeah, they got, yeah, it's a lot of players. I mean, people can do it, and I think it requires the players to, like, make snappy decisions on what right. you're doing right. and not, like, well. And waffle. I'm going to, um, I'm going to move over to, uh, um, let me read my spell list. Wait, hold on. Hold uh, on. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, you really have to, like, you know, let the, the, the players really have to, like, Make those decisions quickly and not. I'm trying to mute my phone because I just got a text from the other people on the show. How dare Thanks them. a lot. Um, it was, was going to call you out it? right now and or Brian. We'll all know who it was. Brian. Brian. Thanks a lot, Brian, for your zero percent interest meme that you sent <laughs> for ruining this recording. <laughs> Brian. <laughs> Here, this is what he sent me. Zero percent interest. Oh, that tracks. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that's a that's a nice side gag that no one yeah. listening to this. I'll will put get. it on Facebook on Friday. Oh, please week. do, <laughs> please do. <laughs> but um, now what were we even talking about? I don't even know. Building characters. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Building characters. But yeah, and I mean and that's the thing is I don't know if there's a wrong way to do it because I mean some people, some people really like to like focus on the like power gaming side of it you know what right. i mean and like to like right. really lean in i want to be the guy that does you all know, the things all yeah. the things well not necessarily all the things but maybe this one thing right be the guy who does the most damage or be the tankiest character which yeah. i've been totally guilty of in the past yeah <laughs> you have you have really it comes down to like how you want to play the game right how you want to play the game and how the people around you want to play the game and that's honestly that is the hardest part of finding a group of people 
that want to play the game the same way you want to play the game. Yeah, definitely. And But I mean, it's also there's a little bit of sometimes you can have a mix of that in the same group. You know, for I mean? sure. Because like if you have one guy who like wants to be the guy who does the most damage, nobody else is that guy. Cool. That works. Yeah. You Now that you works. got this one guy who does all the damage. He and walks the rest up of you can be like and does 200 points of damage and in like, like two rounds. And cool. you're like, you know, great. I can build the guy <laughs> that just builds things <laughs> and, and, and walks into the first encounter with a flare gun <laughs> or uh, make the monk inquisitor gestalt build that just oh my God. bluffs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was a fun one. That gestalt game. That was absurd. <laughs> Which, I mean, honestly, that informed a lot of a lot of our other homebrew after that fact. Though. Oh, yeah, definitely. Like the style game. Yeah, and that's the game I think we talked about in the um, introductions we did before where Jeremy and I were talking about that, that Pathfinder game that kind of got us back into uh, playing RPGs in the first place. It was a friend of mine from work, this guy, Matt. And he, uh, hi, Matt, if you ever listen hi, to Matt. this. Hey, Matt. Uh, thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> for real thank you yeah thank you but you know so we started playing that and it, somehow i don't remember how exactly it happened when we were talking about the game and like uh, ahead of time he was like yeah, i'm kind of debating gestalt and i was like what's that even and, and yet again this was me first starting into pathfinder right like i hadn't really played it i had not played any pathfinder my last didn't exposure. even know it existed didn't even know what it was it just was like oh it's like 3.5 you know D and i was like okay you know so anyway so i start looking into it and he was talking about doing a Gestalt game, and he he might do that. And then I started looking at combinations I could do with characters. For those of you who don't know, Gestalt is where you pick two classes, and they both level up at the same time. You take the best off of each one. And it's like, It oh, makes for very high-level play very God. quickly. <laughs> it does. It does. And it requires a lot of extra work on the mm -hmm. GM side to balance for that. Because yeah. you're either going to, like, <laughs> over, you know, like, adjust <laughs> CR of shit. Or you're gonna, or it's gonna be easy stuff that they just walk right through, you know, and it's it's a really delicate, delicate way to balance that CR. But yeah, he do, he did it, and then we had an entire campaign where we played, you know, up to I don't think we went all the way to twenty. I think we ended around sixteen or it seventeen. Was, it was really it was, high. It was I pretty high. I, I don't by know by the end of it, but I died many times. Yeah. <laughs> with the same character with the same character which by the way spoiler alert and it's not really a spoiler you guys will never know this became the villain in my starfinder game yeah so yeah like when i used it i was like this is the villain <laughs> yeah <laughs> jeremy's character that's died too many times and became evil yeah he, he he lost enough of himself dying multiple times that yeah he, he eventually went cuckoo bananas <laughs> And yet again, I, and that's like what, we were, what I was saying before, is I think that's the amazing part about this hobby in general, is that there's different ways of playing it. There's different ways of making characters. There's different ways that individual players or GMs can, what what they can bring to the table. Yeah. And, you know, that it's so open. And no matter what the system is, it just lead, lends itself to, like, an infinite number of possibilities yeah. of storytelling, even with an AP, because... You could have a totally different party running the exact same AP, and it's a completely different story. Absolutely it, different story. But like, but that's that's ultimately like what RPGs are. It's it's just collaborative storytelling. It's it, you know it's that improv of really just sitting around a campfire, bullshitting, and just riffing off of each other while you're going. You know? Right, and, that, yeah. and that's the best thing about it. And and really, the rules are just there to kind of add a little bit of equity and justice to the situation structure. so that way a little bit of structure <laughs> right these it's like are, robert's rules of order yeah, these you know? are the well it's like that but it's also like here are the basic physical properties of the world that these yeah. characters inhabit here are their laws of physics <laughs> right right you know right. like the the general rules of how reality works yeah and then what you go from there you know and then even then there's then house rules of how people adjust it and then that's yeah. you know but, but then that goes back to how they want to play. Right, exactly. Right? Yeah. And, and the rules are just there to keep everything, keep honestly, to keep everyone's feelings intact. Right, right. Yeah. And that's, that's it, I think that's also, because I have a tendency, I know as a GM personally, I have a tendency to be very rules as written. And part of the reason why I do that is so that when it comes around and there's a character death, yeah. you know what I mean? I can be like, the rule says this you yeah know? and there's I, I didn't not maliciously yeah, try to I kill your character make up a thing yeah. to kill your character yeah. you know what i mean like i didn't you know and i, I wasn't didn't, targeting you yeah and, and i mean and it's yeah and i mean it's ultimately just for that that's really my why i do it is so that i can cover my butt and be like <laughs> the rule says 
this, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. Yeah. and I try to make it and I, I try to make it be fair, you know, and it's both directions. You know what I mean? Like if a character is sure. doing the thing, you know, a player character is doing something, the rule says this, you know, if they're trying to make it do something else, then I go, no, no. And that's the reason why I generally say that sounds cool, but I'm going to say no, because you don't want me doing that. Right. See, and, and that goes the, the difference between you and I as GMs, like, you know, the rules. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you at least know I try. you I try know to. the rules well enough. Oh, you mean for Twilight Two Thousand? Even that, eh, you, 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 like, you know there's the a lot of mistakes well coming up. By the way, guys, a lot of mistakes. So go ahead. But you can also lie to us, and we believe you. Yeah, but, <laughs> me, I, that's my special gift. <laughs> my my special gift is uh, look it up. Yeah. But, <laughs> well, I mean, but even then, like when I'm playing a character, I try to. I'm, I'm the same way. I hold myself to the same thing. I try to just go like, this is what the rule says. This right. is what it the character does. You know what I mean? Right. And it's like, this is how it functions, you know? And I and I try to make sure that I'm not asking a lot. And that's, yet again, just me. Different players, different GMs mm-hmm. have different ways of playing. And there's sometimes there's a lot more room for it, you know? Um, and that also broader comes... interpretations of, of the rules, yeah. you know? Yeah. And it's not that I want to be like a rules lawyer about it, but it's yet again, the only reason I do it is just- You will hear some rules lawyering. <laughs> <laughs> but the only yeah, yeah it'll happen but the only reason i do it is because um yet again when i'm gming i try to do that so that it's like when there's a character death i could be like this is the rules right. and it's not because of some other ruling you know right like it's, it's not it's not personal it's the game these are the mechanics it, and this is just how it turned out yeah exactly um yeah, it makes it a lot easier that way. But that's just, you know, yet again. But that that that's how I have a tendency to play. Occasionally, I'll be like, Jeremy, what do you think? You know, because we do still, and I, I will still be like rule of cool things. You know what I mean? Like, right. It's like, that sounds awesome. Sure. You know. Right. But there's, but that's the thing. There's always something in the rules. I mean, that really goes back to rule zero. Right. right. You know, like the GM has final call on yeah. whatever because it's their game. Right. You know, so- if they think it's kind of cool and it helps out the story and the story, story kind of like trumps the, the mechanics, then yeah, they'll let things slide. Of course, yeah. of course. And I'm not saying, I do not mean this to mean that I will 100% always get the rules 100% right. Nor am I saying that I will 100% always stick to the rules. What I'm saying is generally I try to. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> like that, I try to keep it there and occasionally make exceptions. Um, But yeah. Yeah, and then, um, like I said, I I try to do the same thing because we've we we kind of have a mutual understanding of like rules as written is generally the the better way to go for our games because right. that's the way we operate. Right. I, I just don't know the rules. <laughs> this is the problem. <laughs> the problem is he doesn't know what's written. And I like... I didn't read the book. I just <laughs> I, I I read the AP and I was like, well, that's cool. How how do these mechanics work, <laughs> Brian? Brian, what are the mechanics? <laughs> But that's the other thing too, is and I, I think that 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 goes into the group, you know, like um, because there are definitely people in our group right now that have a tendency to to read ahead, and not in the AP, I mean, but not like AP, in the rules, the rules, like to read yeah. the rules. And I think it's important, very important. This is me as a as a GM. <laughs> it's very important for players to know your character, know your shit, know how your character works. Yeah. If you have an ability, at least read that. If you have some sort of special bit of equipment, know how it works, <laughs> understand action economy, and go from there. I'm not going to name any names. I'm not going to call anybody out. But I am going to say, know your shit. <laughs> Uh, I, I I think Win. you did just call somebody. Out. I did not. I did not name any names. You now what I'm hoping for. Names. Now what I'm hoping for is people to. Oh my god! Listen yeah. and wait to figure out who I'm talking about. Yeah, that's what I'm going for. But I'm not. I may not be talking about uh, any one specific game. I've yet to even mention a game. That's fair. Yeah, because also fair. rule number two for players: know what game you're playing <laughs> and what the rules are in the game that you're playing. <laughs> <laughs> Not some other game of a comparable setting <laughs> that has very different rules. Same concept, different application. Yeah, basically, have a general understanding of the the rules. 
<laughs> oh shit. This guitar. Jeremy's laugh reverberated in my acoustic guitar that was hanging three feet from his head. How dare I? Yeah, it'll uh, show up in the recording, I'm sure. So rule number two. Rule number two would be a player. Uh, know, what, know what game you're playing. Well, I mean, I think I, th I think that <laughs> might... We might want to bump that to rule number one for players. Know the game you're playing. <sighs> All right. I mean, now I got to reverse edit this back so it's the comes in first, but that's fine. So now you're just going to be like, rule number two... Do this no, thing, and no, it no, comes I'm first. not going to re-record it. It's just, I. It's fine. It's fine. So the first one I said is rule two. This one, the last one I said is rule one. <laughs> rule number three. I don't have a rule number three yet for players. Oh, yeah, I do. I do. This is what I'm going to say. Be nice. Be nice. Be nice to each other. And like, nice. and I think ultimately that's the thing. And I think, and that's not just for players. That's GMs too. I have sure. tendency to be an asshole, but I try to do it in a laughing way. But like, <laughs> and like all in good fun. But I do have a tendency to be an asshole. But yeah, just be nice and remember that like we're all here to have fun, you know. For sure. And like that's, I think that's that's the key. And as long as you know, people remember that that it's like it's supposed to be fun, you know. It, it is like, supposed to be fun, and it and that's the thing. Like it's it in making sure that you realize that it's not. Just your character. Right. Yeah. Your character is not Rambo or, you know what? I'm going to Conan. Conan or Conan. Or, or um, Cobra. I'm going to stick with the. Uh, Jon Snow. Jon Snow. No, I mean, th there's still a lot of things going on in that one, though. <laughs> there's a lot of characters in that one. There are a lot of characters in that. But no, it's it's not about your character. It's about the group. Ultimately, right. it's collaborative storytelling. It's not storytelling about like, unless your party has decided that your character is that. And then that goes back to like how you want to play. Yeah, so really, right. it doesn't matter what I say. Uh, you play a game however you want. Right. Oh, no, no. These are just, you know, me, my how, my general really, philosophies on role playing. Really how we play. Yes. It's, it's just how we play. Is. If anyone's curious, if you, if you haven't yeah. listened yet, uh, or since you haven't listened to quite a bit of it yet. That we've recorded because at this point we've recorded quite a, quite a bit yeah but um but yeah but I mean we've been playing for a while now and that's just kind of the the philosophy we've developed over time yeah. but but yeah so I guess these rules don't apply so you can forget them if you want to yeah, uh, do whatever these you want. are okay these aren't rules as much as they are recommendations. I'm I'm not even recommending anything. I'm just saying like <laughs> what we do. You do whatever you want. Well, I mean, I might be talking to people that are also playing the game. <laughs> uh, I'm just kidding. I'm just joking, guys. You guys are great. I love you guys. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's quite the long pause. <laughs> no, you guys are amazing. No, yeah. You, like, seriously, like, like Brian and uh, Kyle and Chris and uh, someone else that will remain nameless. Who, oh, wow. Who really can't even we really say gotta... who he is yet. Because I, even though he's on our website, so if you want to know, go to our website because he's he's on the website. He's buffering. Yeah, he's he's buffering still, but <laughs> um, but he won't show up for some episodes still. Uh, yeah, because his scheduling is stupid. But um, but yeah. So oh, I don't remember what the point of that was. That I'm not talking about you guys is ultimately the point. I'm not rule talking. number four. Rule number four. Not talking about you guys. Not rule number four. Not talking about you guys. <laughs> recommendation number four. Recommendation, recommendation number recommendation four. Recommendation number. And four. these aren't for you guys. Seriously, these this is for anybody. Like this is just like I said, how we like to play and like kind of the general. And actually, I would say recommendation number four. If I ever had to like tell players something as a GM uh, or other players as a player, would I've you know, the one thing I would tell people, and this goes for GMs too, if you want to have a fun game, don't try to win. Oh, there's no winning. There's no winning. There's no winning. Like, you you could make the most badass character, like I said before, the tankiest character possible, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, he will never be touched. I've been accused of that, and I did it. Uh, it was dumb, and it was really fun. But it was also like... It got stupid. It was obscene. It was absurd, and it was completely legal. <laughs> it was completely legal. Well, I mean... It was gestalt. It was gestalt it was, legal. Yeah, it was gestalt legal, which is legal. But, I mean... But, yeah, I mean, you could do these things, but, like... And some people like to play that way, you know, and that's fine. But, I mean, but I think the point of what I was saying was, like, there's not winning, you know? Like, it, it, it's... There's no... There's, there's no collecting the greatest number of points to succeed. Yeah, you no, know, like if the story's good, 
and everyone's having fun. Yeah. That's, that's great. That's how you win. Yeah, that's winning. Everybody walks away thinking that was the most fun they've had in like a fucking month. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, I've been at sessions before where characters have died and it's been like, that was amazing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Having characters that die and it was like, oh, they fell into a black hole. That sucked. That session was awesome. <laughs> that was really fun. Yeah. That was fun. Yeah. That was, man, that one was epic. Yeah. So, yeah, so we've covered uh, characters, our kind of general ideas on on building characters, uh, running campaigns, starting starting running a campaign, which is ultimately the most daunting, daunting thing you can possibly do. Terrifying. Terrifying. And um, shit, and a whole bunch of jibber jabber about fucking absolutely nothing. Yeah, we're going to edit this down to like 10 minutes. And no, no, I think it'll actually be a lot longer an hour. than you think. It's not going to be an hour. I know that because there was that whole thing with my wife coming home and the dogs barking and other things like that. But um, nah, we'll have we'll have a decent amount. You'll be surprised how much I leave in. Like, um, I'm, I'm literally just going to edit out chunks like yeah, big swaths. Jeremy's comments that were racially insensitive. That line's not getting edited out, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> I have. But I will edit what he said out. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to send angry letters <laughs> great great people are going to be like i will give oh, you his address no. <laughs> <laughs> and you can send the hate mail there just don't, great don't fantastic it's fantastic please please don't <laughs> i didn't <laughs> it is. just say it it was really messed up i can't believe you said that i mean dogs are awful right yeah yeah <laughs> No, oh, hold hold on. Let me say this now and get it out of the way. I love dogs. I love dogs and cats. And cats. And cats. What about fish? Do you love fish? I, they're delicious. <laughs> what about dogs? <laughs> they're also delicious. <laughs> Disclaimer, Jeremy does not, I eat, do dogs. not eat dogs. He I have never dog. eaten a dog in my life no, that no, I know of. No, no, we're all very, uh, very kind pet owners. <laughs> we do not eat uh, dogs and cats and fish. I might eat yours. Though. I mean, I might eat fish. God, I could go for some fish now. Dude, we should totally get some sushi. I'm in. Uh, this is Jeremy Fox with The Wrong Adam. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I would like to be known as The Wrong Adam. Until we get the real... Until we get the right Adam. The right Adam. Adam Driver. Adam Driver, if you're listening to this... I don't know why you would be, but I am... Adam Driver, if you're listening to this, give us a call or email. Call we, Adam. We will get you on the show. Well, I'm not going to have my phone number up, so you can call me, because that'd be dumb to put my phone number on the internet like that. I don't want people calling me. Oh, that would be... A poor terrible choice. Yeah. yeah. No. But um, we do actually have some plans for this show specifically at some point. I'm, I'm going to kind of use this as an opportunity to, one, talk to other players, uh, like talk to Chris, talk to Kyle, talk with Brian, talk with uh, name has been deleted, you know, later <laughs> on about their characters. <laughs> and um, I think this is going to be a run of gag. I think it's going to be funny. Um, you know, talk to them about their characters and role playing games in general. And, um, also, we have some other ideas down the road, as this is an opportunity to talk about the broader, you know, field of gaming and other aspects of life, aspects of life that we might get into at some point. There's at least plans for that. And we'll see how that all plays out. But anyway, yeah, uh, Jeremy Fox, he doesn't hate dogs. Uh, I don't hate dogs. He, he loves dogs. He might make racially insensitive comments occasionally, but he likes dogs. So... <laughs> You know, karma, it balances out. <laughs> <laughs> Hates people, loves dogs. That that might be accurate. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, I guess uh, that's it. 